When getting started with Unity and scaling your projects up from a one-person team to several, on a larger project especially, where you put your code and how you organize it can lead to a lot of headaches. So in this project, I took the chance to recreate the same simple bowling game in Unity from scratch six different times. I used all the different techniques that are listed in the article. So I start out with a no manager approach. This is probably where everyone instinctually starts with Unity. It's a bit odd that you put code on the physical asset in the 3D scene, like the bowling pin, the bowling ball, or the floor. But that leads itself to some intuitiveness, and some people start there, putting pin code on the pin. There's scaling issues with each of these, so take a look at the article and see. Then I move on to the empty go approach, which seems to be where people might evolve next. They put an empty game object in the scene, separate from those assets that I mentioned, and they put as much game logic there as possible with references dragged in from different 3D elements. Then I move on to a simple game manager. This is a yet another custom solution that I see many people use, and they take that empty go approach and they flesh it out a little bit more. How could they have other bits of code reference it through a pattern like a singleton pattern? Take a look at that one. Then then I thought about evolving that into a series of singleton managers or interconnected sub-managers. I created something called the Unity Manager of Managers. This was done quite a while ago. I haven't used this in any AAA projects, but take a look at that as another baby step in this evolution, as I said. Then I created a custom MVCS solution. What is MVCS and how does it apply to software is covered in the article. You definitely can read a lot about all that on the web. How that applies to game development is uh, its not as easy to explain. Some people do not use it in their games. Some people think it's not an appropriate solution. But take a look at, there, at the pros and cons. I recently wrote another article about that and updated this one to, uh, to link to that one. And then finally, the only off-the-shelf architectural solution, and there are many that I use for this article, is the Strange IOC setup. This is an inversion of control setup, which is a different way to think about structuring your code. I'd recommend reading the article. If you're interested in one or all of the techniques, dig into the code that's provided and see how it's done, and see if that informs how your project could grow next. That's it. Thanks.